Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to be talking about input output tables and this is pretty simple. You'll have no trouble with this, I'm sure. And I thought I'd start with an example. Let's start with an example about grades. You know if you take a test, the teacher calculates your grade and she does that by dividing the number of questions you got right by the total number of questions on the test. Your grade equals the number of questions you got right divided by the number of questions on the test, which in this case is 15. Well, I can create a function to represent that sentence. And the first thing I want to do is create some variables or put some variables in there. So I'm going to put in your grade, and we'll call that y, is calculated by dividing your number of correct answers, and we'll call that x, by the number of questions on the test, which is 15. So y is or equals x divided by 15. And I hope you see the input-output relationship here. We're going to input a value, which is the number that we got correct, or x, into the function, and the output value will be y. And our function will look like this. y equals x divided by 15. So now i got a function. y equals x divided by 15. I could use that function to input any number of correct answers. In other words, replace x with the number of correct answers on a test and divide that by 15 and the output will be the score on the test. Let's say you got 12 questions right on the test. Then we could replace x with 12, and the equation would read y equals 12 divided by 15. Now we can figure out what the output, or what the y value is, by just dividing 12 by 15, and we're going to get 0 0.80 equals 12 divided by 15. Now, 0.80 is probably not how you're used to seeing your grade. Usually your teacher converts that decimal into a percent. And you remember how to do that, don't you? Yeah, that's right. You move the decimal place 2 to the right, or you multiply by 100, and 0 0.80 becomes 80%. Way to go, you did pretty well. Well now, I think the teacher might want to have a chart or a table that tells her what score to give for any number of correct answers that a student got on the test. And I bet we could create one. We could create a table that looked like this. And we could have a column labeled input or x and that would be our input values. And then we'd have a column labeled y and that would be our output volumes. Now x is the input volume or the number of correct answers and y is the resulting output or the grade on the test. Now what's the domain of our input? What are the correct answers, that the number of correct answers that a student could have? Well there's 15 questions. They could get none of them right. They could get one of them right. They could get 15 of them right. But they couldn't get minus one right and they couldn't get 16 right. So our domain is going to start at 0 and run to 15. Now we could fill this table out by calculating what each of those input values resulted in for y, our output value, or grade. We've already done uh, the 12. If you got 12 questions correct, we substituted 12 for x and found out that you got a 0 0.80 on the test, or an 80%. What if you got none correct? 
Then you'd have y equals 0 divided by 15, and that equals 0. So you'd get a 0 on the test. If you got 1 right, then it would be 1 divided by 15, or 0.07. And we could do that for every number between 0 and 15, and we'd have an input-output table for the function y equals x divided by 15. Well, here's another function, y equals 2x plus 3. Could we create an input-output table for that? Sure, that'd be easy. First, we need a table, and we need a column labeled x, or input, and we need a column labeled y, or output. Now, I just kind of arbitrarily picked the domain of the input. I picked 1 through 15. And then for each of those numbers, I'm going to substitute it into the function in place of x and calculate what y equals. For instance, if I put 1 into x, then I've got 2 times 1, or 2, plus 3. 2 plus 3 equals 5. If I put 2 in, then I've got 2 times 2, or 4, plus 3 equals 7. And I can do that for every number in the input-output table and come up with a resulting y for every x between 1 and 15. Now I want you to notice something. There's a pattern here. Each of these numbers in the y column is 2 larger than the one before it. 7 is 2 larger than 5. 9 is 2 larger than 7. It's a regular increase in size. There's an increase of 2 between each of the uh, y values. And that makes sense, because all we're changing in the function is the x. And if we add 1 to x, like if we start with 1, we come up with 5. But if we add 1 to x, we're really adding 1 times 2. Or we're adding 2 to the resulting output. So our y will be 2 larger than the previous y. You try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Well, we're supposed to create an input-output table for the function y equals 3x minus 2. And the problem states that the domain of the table should be minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Domain, what's that mean? Well, those are the, that's the, uh, all the input values that we could use in this function. It's the values of x that we're going to put into the input-output table. And when we create our table, it's going to look like this. Minus 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2 are our input values. And for each of those input values, I've calculated a y based on the function y equals 3x minus 2. I hope yours looks just like this. And I hope you noticed that, again, this is a very regular progression. For minus 2, we get minus 8. When we increase minus 2 by adding 1 to it and, and get a minus 1 as our input value, our output value increases by 3. And that's because we're multiplying that increase in the input value by 3, so the resulting output will be 3 larger. Well, this one's a little bit trickier because we're asked to create our own function.
But I think I can do that. I think the first thing I want to do is CUCC this. I'm going to underline the question or what we're asked to do, which is to create an input-output table. And then I'm going to circle the numbers. I circled a 4 and I circled a 2. Now, what I got to do is translate this English into math. And I'm going to start at the beginning. I want to say the output. Well, I know that the output is my Y value. So I'm going to start with Y. I'm going to replace output with Y. Y is. Well, is always means equals. So now I can change it to Y equals. Well, now i got to figure out what it equals. What's on this side of the, of the equation? And I'm going to start with that input because I know that my input value is X. So I got Y equals 4 less than 2 times X. Well, 2 times X. That would be 2X, right? And then it says 4 less than that. So Y is 2X minus 4. Well, that's really the hard part. The input-output table is easy. I just create a table and they've told me what my domain is. It's minus 2 to 2. So I put that in the X column. And for each of those X values, I calculate the output or the Y value. And that's what my table looks like. And I hope yours looks exactly like that. Well, that's our lesson on input-output tables. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on input-output tables. After you've practiced there, go back to MasterMath and take the quiz on input-output tables. I hope you enjoyed yourself, learned something, and I hope I see you again real soon.